The lesson from the Old Testament is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, uh, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This weekend, as the country filled out March Madness brackets for a basketball tournament that lots of people know absolutely nothing about until they get this piece of paper and feel like they want to fill it out, I kept hearing conversations like this. Do we pick the team that we think will win or the one we want to win? And if now we decide to watch the games, do we cheer for the team we picked who was supposed to win or the underdog no one expected to have a chance? Do we go with our heads or our hearts? What is in our hearts anyway? When we look at our friends and family, we likely picture that what we have in our hearts is love, love, concern, care, not just idealistic, easy love, because there's lots of responsibility tied up with love, lots of opportunities to figure out what patience and sharing and belonging are all about. But love, that's maybe the first thing that comes into our minds when we think about our hearts. So are there other things in our hearts? We put things in our hearts all the time. Sometimes we put something in our hearts that stops us from living our lives in a healthy way. Things like alcohol or drugs, workaholism, or money. When we played board games as kids like Monopoly or Life, we learned to measure winning in money. It's easy, it's tangible. It might be hard to get enough money, but we can see at the end of the day or the end of the year, are we winning or losing if the value we have in our heart is money? What's in our hearts? Today's passage tells us that God has seen the people struggle, and God wants them to know that from now on, God has decided to put the word within them. The people's hearts will become the home of God's covenant. They'll know it. They'll recognize it from the inside. They will be God's people from the inside out. The people will be at home in their own faith, in their own skin, because they will know to whom they belong. They won't have to struggle to understand the words of a covenant written in stone. They will understand covenant through relationship. It sounds wonderful, as if we'll just know the right way to live our lives. But we know the truth is, it's still challenging to let the compassion and generosity of spirit, the patience and the genuine life that God asks of us, control who we are, rather than living in the ways of the world, the values of the world. When we say the word home, as in our heart is God's home, we may imagine comfort. But no matter what stage of life we're at, home is not all comfort. 
If we live in family, there are relationships full of joys and full of concerns. If we live on our own, there are moments in which there is too much quiet. But whether our lives are really noisy or really quiet, God's covenant inside us means we are not alone. God's covenant inside us also means we're asked to ask ourselves the hard questions. Who are we becoming? Are we learning what it means to forgive ourselves and other people? Are we finding the generosity of spirit that was planted in us and letting it grow? Are we practicing patience so that when we really need it, it is one of our spiritual gifts? There's a word game I play on my phone. It gives you between four and eight letters, and there are blank words you have to figure out from three to eight letters long. It gives you extra, extra credit if you get words that they don't think of. There's also this button that you can press that will mix all the letters up, and that's why I'm telling you about my game this morning. When I play, I always think I'm looking at all the letters equally, that I don't need to mix them up because if I was going to get the word, they're all there already. I wouldn't have to do that. But then I get stuck. And eventually, I hit the button. And more often than not, I suddenly see the board differently. And the word I was missing jumps out at me. The lesson I'm taking from that is that sometimes... We think we are already doing our best. We know the rules, what God wants from us. We don't need to look through any other lens to figure out if we're on track. We don't need to ask ourselves any questions about how we're doing. We already know whether we've let something else get in the way of God in our hearts. But if we stop and we say, wait, let me read the scripture again. Let me look at my life for a minute as if my decisions are not already the best I can do. Let me ask God to show me a new way, a different way to honor the relationship I have with God. Let me pray with the psalmist, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Put a new and right spirit within me. Could it be that if we look at our hearts from a different point of view, we might find something we did not know we were missing. God wants us to walk through life genuine, whole, and at peace. God wants us to recognize the covenant that is within us. God wants us to lift up our hearts, to let the light of God's life shine through us. May we choose to open our hearts again and make our hearts God's home. In Jesus' name, amen.